Hi everyone, I am Fajar Purnama and on this fourth video I would like to I would like to demonstrate the script on the client side or what you call it the slave or on the brand side um, okay let's go to my github first and here is the code and as always uh, copy this code oh no before that let's go to the slide and this slide then go straight to page uh, this one so on the third video was to install my script on the master side while on this fourth video is to install the script on the slave side Now as always download my script I use git I download them in uh, in my web server directory which is for www.html and then git clone uh, ok oh I already have then let's delete it okay now I'm downloading a fresh one and to just to inform you that I've made a I fix a, a lot of bugs which I have actually uh, fixed locally but I forgot to update my github and so just finally now I updated the I updated and fixed over some bugs so please re-download this script again when you're if you're watching this video now it's done let's go to the process again make sure you have the dependencies uh, like uh, our diff and duplicity Now that's done, then we go to change the ownership of the directory and we have to create this one again. I'll start from this one. Uh, actually I already have, but let me delete it now. Okay, it was just a previous trial, but on this video I would, would like to start again let's make this directory or maybe I'll just do it later when we find some errors but definitely we need to make the change the ownership of my scripts folders okay now let's test the my scripts folder which will be on local host okay ah oh, already go straight to it so now here and then choose Moodle and then go to settings and then we need to change this one to Moodle and change this one to the to my Moodle URL let's not use the HTTP change and it wouldn't work because this one doesn't exist so I already set my script to give that error so just to know so that one didn't exist so make sure to do this and enter and now let's do it again Moodle and this one is a local host and 
this one is Moodle and it should work now I have two cores and return and I have this one empty and so on as I said uh, you can upload your own course or do a backup but let's go straight to step 8 so you used to press the update button but here we don't but here if you really don't have a course ah uh, not yet sorry don't forget to go to the settings and input the URL given by the master server the master server is on uh, this one okay master so give this URL okay when giving this URL make sure that you choose the course first so you can that you can set it uh, the settings specifically then change uh, ignore this this is a bug so the if you don't choose a course you will go to the global settings but if you do go to the course you will have its uh, local settings and so I'm sorry that uh, you have to choose the course every time I forgot to set the script to remember what you have chosen and other than uh, uploading your course content or doing the CLI backup if you really don't have a uh, course content and you have the link to this to the master server you can download the content which is this one so pass the get content it will download the content from the server ah, so quick so I also add a bit of a JavaScript here to show the progress recently I just added and now since this but but for the but for the interface I haven't added any JavaScript yet so you have to refresh every time now that you have this backup data you need to delete um no 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 i mean just to go on with the demonstration so here's the course on the slave side which has a one computer programming topic and then i'll just do a CLR backup like i did last time and it's done and here i have the 16 megabytes of this course contents well on this one is 30 megabytes why is that because I intentionally update I intentionally update uh, okay. update this course contents and add more add two more topics so here in the old file I have only one topic which is on the slave side while on the master side I have the new file which has uh, three more topics one computer programming, computer network and penetration testing which is why it's uh, about 14 megabyte larger than the, the old one so you can say this is the new file this is the old file and now we are going to perform a uh, update of the old file we can do the update automatically but on this video I would like to do it uh, step by step following this procedure so first is I need to create the signature of the old file you can do it automatically but we'll do the guide step to see how my script works make signature and I have created a signature 
refresh the interface again and here is the signature and then the next step is to upload this signature to the master side and take a look that this is what it has on the master side now I will upload my signature to the master side and it's done and then on the master side refresh and I have set the script to do this process once the signature is updated it will be used on the new file to compute the delta so take a look here and now since it has received the signature it will use the signature on this MBZ and this MBZ to create the delta and the next step is to download since we're on the slave side is to download the delta so now download it get the delta and it's done now we have the delta but we still need to patch the delta to the old file to create the new file and lastly apply the patch and it's complete and so the old file has been um, updated into the new file but I keep I keep the old file just in case as I s oh yeah I forgot to tell you that I won't go into very much detail on this video but for more details I will go for other videos for example I had a split here and I can and you can use our diff there instead of our, of our diff and here you can check the MD5 if if it matches or not and maybe some other features that I didn't show you here but before I end this video let me show that this uh, that this thing works and unfortunately that I haven't I don't have the script to restore the course automatically but I will have it soon and my idea is uh, to use this uh, mush but if you have a better idea please do leave a comment and you're all free to contribute and if you're willing to help me making the script that is so for now is to restore the course manually and then oh, okay I remember is in the far WW so yeah this is something that I haven't done but it's possible now that this thing is only have a one computer topic now let's try to restore this and whether to see and to see whether the course is updated so restore to an existing course called the first step so you can choose to wait to merge the backup course into an existing course or to delete the content of the course and then restore so it's up to you but the normal way for synchronization is to merge this into existing course and I don't like to include the uh, enrolled users since I'm only interested in the contents so next uh, okay so this, this is uh, absolutely up to you for me this kind of provision is fine
and okay brace yourself that this is only the first uh, before synchronization it has only one content now after synchronization it will have all of the contents about more details for example why the delta is 23 megabyte instead uh, So for further detail like why the delta size or the difference is 23 megabyte instead of uh, 14 or 15 megabyte where 30 minus 16 is around 14 to 15 megabyte and why this one is much higher that is because that I'm using RDF D, RDF on the compressed file directly which the result is not so accurate. So that's why I prepared the button of diff there so that I will def so far as what he did is it what he will do we will extract the compressed file and then perform synchronization differential synchronization between the two extracted file and you will get a more accurate result but for the detail I will leave it on the next video just for this video is a very brief just how to show how to use my interface thank you